If we pop this beefy magnet here, and then take this little dude and wrap his legs up in copper wire to make sure he can't escape, then pop him onto the magnet, and chuck a charge through the coil, he jumps away from the magnet. So let's use this principle to make a motor, and try some different motor rotors, power some stuff with those motors, and then blast them with the full might of my power supply to just see what happens. Now, to make our motor, we're gonna need to build a rotor that can mount our copper wire. So these pieces here will allow us to make a two armature rotor, and then to time the motor, I'm gonna make a very simple commutator with these wheel pieces. This is a very simple design that you can make yourself. Then we'll need our stator, which is just the stationary part of the motor. These two pieces will support the rotor so it can spin. Nice. And of course, we'll need a nice neodymium magnet to drive the rotor. Now this guy here is total overkill, so I'm just gonna use one instead of multiple. Next then, we'll need our insulated copper wire. And I'm using a nice thin 32 gauge wire here, which we'll begin by securing with some blue tack. We can then wind the wire around one side of the armature. And after 100 loops, we switch over to the other side, making sure to keep the winding going in the same direction. After another 100 loops on that side, our rotor windings are complete. And now it's time for a commutator, which will serve as our timer for the rotations. First, I'm going to strip the enamel coating from the wire ends to expose them. So this is just one long wire from start to finish. And these holes in the LEGO wheels will allow us to pass the wire through, slightly offset from the orientation of the rotor coils. After passing the exposed wire through the holes, we can secure it and insulate it on the other side with some blue tack. You can see here our exposed wire supported between the wheels. Then we'll do the same thing with the other end of the wire, passing it through the holes on the opposite side. So now we have our finished rotor with offset commutator that will hopefully keep the pulses driving the rotor as the windings pass the magnet. Next then, we'll need to supply our rotor with power. This slightly thicker wire will be used to make some electrical brushes to transfer power to the rotor. Once again, we'll need to strip the insulation, and I'm going to sandwich these two wires between these pieces here. And then secure them in place with these little bobble things. Nice. Then we can pop this onto our stator over here. And gently place our rotor into the stator. We can now see the brushes just touching the exposed wires between the LEGO wheels. And as the rotor turns, these contacts turn on and off. So. Let's hook up a 9 volt battery to test it out. Right now the brushes aren't touching, but if I give it a little nudge... Hey, there we go! I'm actually really happy with this, this worked the first time round. That rarely happens. Now we can see the brushes making contact with the commutator wires. We can see the satisfying little sparks created at the contact points. I just love this and the noise it makes. Not a bad amount of torque. Now, the positioning of the brushes often needs to be adjusted slightly to make it run better, but I just got lucky here and this worked the first time nicely. By the way, if you'd like to see more experiments like this with LEGO and technology, please feel free to like or subscribe. Cheers! So the next question of course is, can we actually power anything with this? Now this fan here is a little heavy, but let's see how this little guy fares. Hmm, not bad actually. There's even a gentle breeze. Until... Whoops. <laughs> We've lost a <the> blade. <laughs> Amazingly, there's still enough torque for this to continue wiggling and spinning. But how about lower voltages? This 1.5 volt battery doesn't quite seem to offer enough. But if we pop on this wheel, it seems to help as a sort of flywheel. And now we get a slow but steady pace, even at only 1.5 volts. Not bad for one and a half volts. And it looks like at this voltage we're getting around 350 RPM. Not bad. And what speed do we get with 9 volts? Hmm, it looks like approximately three times this speed at around 1100 RPM. Now another experiment I wanted to try was powering this using a capacitor instead of a battery. This is a 5.5 farad cap, which is actually pretty beefy. But I like that it can be charged in only five seconds. So let's see how long this motor can run off a 5 second charge to the capacitor. Now I suspect that because the contact points only touch so briefly, eight minutes. Come on, little dude. sending short pulses, 
Come on, 10 minutes, 10 minutes. I feel the efficiency of this motor is probably pretty reasonable. Hey, 10 minutes. And indeed, this guy just keeps chugging. There's no way it's making 11 minutes. Hey, 11 minutes. Ah, oh, it died. Not a bad little effort. All right, how about actually powering a real Lego contraption? This gear turns a worm gear, powering the wheels. And so if we pop our little motor on top, add a further gear reduction, and then connect the two using a chain, now when we spin the motor, it very slowly turns the wheels. And after securing it in place, yeah, I'm cautiously optimistic. So let's turn this thing into a tank and hook up a nine volt battery. All right, fingers crossed. Hey, hell yeah, I'm so happy with this. The torque output of the motor really isn't anything to write home about, but clearly there's enough of a gear reduction that we can still run this tank reasonably well. I quite like the mechanical whir of the engine and the exposed guts of it. It's slow, but I can speed up the video to make her run beautifully. Doesn't make for a very fast car, but the torque on the wheels is actually pretty good. This could certainly be used to power some slow moving Lego inventions. And if you'd like to see more behind the scenes footage on how I make these inventions, you can also find me on Patreon, link below. Okay, I'm sure some of you are wondering, what happens if we just chuck the full might of a power supply into the motor? Let's start with around two amps. Hmm, well, two amps at four volts doesn't seem to be quite enough. 10 volts. Hmm, okay, better. So let's kick it up a notch. As we slowly increase the voltage, I'm enjoying watching the little sparks fly at the contact points. My only regret here is not using more than two amps for this test. We're maxed out. But look at her purr. I just love those sparks. Ah, oh, we're done. <laughs> Looks like it just snapped the wire. Next, let's try a couple different rotors. This three-arm rotor really isn't optimized for this setup, but it has thicker wires to hopefully prevent the contacts melting. So let's experiment anyway. All right, this time let's just max it out. 10 amps. I don't think the spin speed is accurate here, but at 10 volts, the wire loop started coming loose. Whoop, there goes the wire. So this guy's life is definitely coming to an end soon. Let's see if we can burn it out. Whoa, that smells really bad. Awesome, what a mess. What about another nice thick wire two arm rotor? We'll max out at 10 amps again. And even at four volts, she purrs nicely. All right, here we go again. We're getting some very nice speed. And this design seems pretty robust. We can see some lovely sparks in the commutator. Not ah, until our wire got chucked off the arm. Uh -huh. Well, this was fun. And now I want to see what happens if I make a much larger, more powerful motor and chuck several hundred watts through it. We'll see. We'll see.